Shelly? Charlene. Charlene. Okay. Charlene, not Shelly. Charlene. Um, what she did for worship, which I think is a very creative thing, is get your favorite songs, spiritual songs, drop them in the CD or the cassette player, and sit there and listen to them. Some of us, music is a very important part of our spiritual walk. And thank you for doing that because that's where I'm at. And a lot of the music that I listen to probably would not be the favorites of some of you here. So I'm, I'm stifling myself a little bit because I don't want to offend anybody. Because we all have different tastes. I wish we could come of age in our little community where we didn't make moral judgments and just say, that's not my taste, that's not my taste. And just let us feed if it, on what feeds us as long as it's you can hear the words and it's uplifting Jesus Christ. Um, anyway, this is not a seminar on music, but, but I do have three songs. I'm not going to do them all at once. I want to just sort of space them out so it gives a little breathing time in between our, our Bible study. And it's very hard to follow my good friend Alan Lindsay because uh, um, not only is he a humble man, but he's a very knowledgeable man on end time things. And, and I was right here listening with you as he went through Rev and as he went through Daniel and and I told him at, at lunch yesterday, I said, all the stories in Daniel that I understand, you already took, Alan. Um, he took, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He took uh, Daniel in the lion's den, and he left me with the heavy chapters, which I'm not even going to try to unpack for you. I, I have studied them, and I believe they're very precious. And I believe when our evangelists go into a town and set up their tents, little tents or big tents or halls, that that's the first thing they go to is prophecy. And so they should, because it... <clears throat> it confirms the good book. It confirms the good book. The modern analogy I tell to my kids is I said, if you go home today, kids, after school, and look in your mailbox, you will have a check for one million dollars. I'm not talking about an advertising gimmick. You'll have a check for $1 million. And you laugh at me and ha-ha, Litchfield's lost it. And you go home and there's a check for you for $1 million. I say, well, first of all, I expect you to come and share some of it with me. <laughs> um, second of all, you come back the next day and I say, today, please, you're going to get hit by a Greyhound bus. Would you get in your cars and drive down to a Greyhound Depot? I don't think so. In fact, you'd probably stay totally off the road. Why? Because the first thing I told you was true. The next jolly thing I tell you could very likely be true. God is very wise. He gives us the book of Daniel and Revelation for two reasons. One, to tell us what's going to happen. And two, to let us know that he is ultimately in control and to just rest in his arms. This, this right here, folks, at Calvary, God's son was made an offering. The price required, it was paid in full. The word of God was spoken. The power of sin was broken. That's biblical. When Jesus died, you and I were assured of eternal life if we plug into that life. The song we sing is, covered with his life, whiter than snow, fullness of his life, then shall I know my... Sing it quickly. How does it start? How does it start? What's the first line? Look upon Jesus, sinless is he, Father in peace, life unto me, my life of scarlet, my sin and woe, covered with his life, whiter than snow. It goes on, but we'll stop there. Let's pray. <clears throat> Jesus, Thank you that at the cross,
the power of sin was broken. Thank you that we're covered with your life. We're redeemed by the power of the blood. There's power, power, wonder-working power. Your strength is perfect. Mercy said no. Jesus, Alan said, and I close with Alan's words, that the greatest preparation for the final crisis is to be passionately, desperately in love with Jesus Christ. And then I'll end with John's words where he said, even so, come Lord Jesus. We love you. Can't wait to see you. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, may we give you a good Sabbath at camp. In Jesus' name, amen.